What's going on guys, it's Snowy here, and today I'm bringing you my first uh, Splatoon 2 video on my channel, um, and it is a 96 gal guide. Uh, I have been playing this weapon for quite a bit now, uh, it's my favorite weapon in the game, so I know I'm not the best at it, uh, but I think I'm good enough at it to where I can make a basic comprehensive guide um, for you guys to... Uh, be able to get used to it if you want to use it in competitive or something like that. Um, also have some games played with them, uh, both the vanilla and the deco, uh, playing in the background. Uh, if you want to ever just kind of chill out and just watch gameplay instead. <laughs> um, before I start, uh, if you want to see more uh, competitive content from me, uh, like tournament VODs and scrims, or maybe even a few more guides uh, for the weapons I play, um, then leave a like, comment, uh, comment feedback or what you'd like to see uh, and subscribe to the channel uh, it really helps me grow as a creator and helps me get motivation because um, it's kind of it's kind of rough uh, starting a channel just kind of on a whim um, but now that that's out of the way um, let's get started uh, with learning about the 96 gal okay so let's start with the basics of the 96 gal um, it falls into the midliner category, uh, meaning it has a little bit longer range, a little bit more damage than your short range frontliners, um, and tends to be a better support uh, than an aggressive weapon. Um, its range is a little bit longer than the Splattershot Pro, uh, but a little bit it's a little bit longer than the Splattershot Pro and the HP nozzle nose, but a little less than the Squeezer. So it's about like right it's like right in the middle of those two weapons. It gives you an idea of how long its range is. Uh, its base damage output is 62.0, with its minimum damage being 35.0. So now that I've gone over the basics of some uh, the weapon, the 96 gal, um, I kind of just want to go over why it's used in the current meta. Um, and it's really because uh, it's been getting a lot of buffs uh, over a very long span of time. It was very good at the start of the game, um, the vanilla, the deco wasn't introduced until later, um, but the vanilla 96 was very good at the start of the game, um, and got its ink armor nerfed to 210 points from 180 points. Uh, but after that, it wasn't really touched uh, until like almost ever, um, and people didn't really start to use the 96 deco after that came out until version 4.8. Um, and that's really because people were uh, Tenebrella was really prominent in that meta, and people were trying to find ways to get around it. And 96 Deco, while not, it can't do it all on its own, it does have the splash wall to take out the shield, uh, which is one kind of piece of the puzzle that pe that players were looking at. Um, and that wasn't uh, really introduced to the meta as um, a niche pick until version 4.8. Um, so you have this time uh, time, uh, time span from when the armor got nerfed on uh, the 96 in patch 1. Point, I want to say it was 1.1.2 1. 1. Um, to patch 4.8 where it's not used. And during that time, it's been getting buff after buff after buff. And all of those um, buffs, while they're all small in their own right, uh, spiraled into um, something a lot bigger. Uh, the main factor uh, which helped 96, the 96 gain popularity uh, in patch 4.9 was having its RNG on the ground reduced by 8%, uh, which brought it to a shot variation of 4 degrees once the bullet leaves the, uh, leaves the main weapon. Um, that's the radius of the uh, how, how far the shot can shoot away from the target is four degrees um it's actually kind of funny because it's shorter it's it's less than the uh, splatter shot but the slow fire rate makes it seem a lot worse um but all of these notes uh help the 96 gal out um kind of a side note here that uh the 96 gal deco was released in patch 2.2.1 and every change made to this, uh, made to the 96 gal after this point, other than special points, uh, affected both the vanilla and the deco. Okay, so now that I've kind of um, explained why it's used in the metagame, um, I want to kind of just give you um, 
an idea of how you want to play the 96, both the vanilla and the deco. Um, and it really comes down to relying a lot on your kit. I know that seems like kind of shaky for some people, but both the kits really complement different aspects of the 96 really well, in my opinion. Um, and it's just kind of how it works. Uh, it's very synergistic. Um, so, and neither of them seem, neither of the kits seem great at first, um, but once they're paired with the main weapon, then it, it just kind of comes together. So that's basically why you want to play around the kit uh, whenever you play 96. And it helps a lot make for your rather lackluster main weapon. Um, and of course the main weapon still does things, but on its own, it has a lot of flaws, let's be real. <laughs> um, so let's start with my personal favorite, uh, the vanilla. The vanilla 96 is definitely the more supportive of the two. Uh, it has a kit of sprinkler and ink armor, and you really want to try to just paint the entire game. Um, while providing picks or damage onto the enemy uh, if your team needs it or if you can. Um, while it sounds weird, it's where the 96 shines. Uh, the vanilla 96 shines. Um, even though it's not necessarily a good painting weapon, it's still decent because of its range um, and the, uh, how often uh, bullets fall into the ground. Um, as well as one of the uh, previous buffs where um, the, large, the longest range bullet uh, actually paints more of the floor. Um, so the 96 gal, I mean, I just kind of explained why, uh, but has uh, decent painting power on its own, and when you combine that with a sprinkler, you can easily just control a small area of the map um, and just punish anyone who tries to take it from you. The sprinkler also helps you build... Um, build up to your ink armor, which is oftentimes less than 190, but 190 points for ink armor. Um, and it's very similar to the H3 Nozzle Nose from a few patches ago in the role it fulfills, where it would just throw bombs, um, kind of just throw armors out there. You just keep recycling sprinklers, you keep shooting, uh, get a pick here or there, and you just keep throwing out armors. Now for the Deco. Uh, the 96 Deco is the more aggressive weapon of the two. Uh, it has a kit of splash wall and splashdown, and wants to really not necessarily slay, but apply pressure for the slayers. Um, if you play it like a slayer, uh, you will probably find yourself feeding way too much and dying without trading. Um, because even if you do go in aggressively and get a kill, it's re it's pretty likely that you're going to trade. Uh, part partly due to the RNG, um, but. That's also partly due to your slow firing rate. Uh, so you really want to play. You want to. You want to play the pressure game. You want to pressure your opponents out with your range uh, and stay protected behind your splash wall. Um, the splash wall is really like a critical part of the kit because you're a lot. Uh, it allows you to um, fire at an opponent and be able to afford to miss one or two shots and still uh, come out on top with the kill and not uh, die shortly afterward. Um, Splashdown can also be used to scare an opponent or get a kill when landing from a super jump. D if you panic Splashdown, it, it, you should know that it doesn't work most of the time. Uh, just that's the level of play uh, players are playing at these days. Um, it's not like, I don't know, I don't, I don't remember how long ago that uh, people were like, oh I can't kill the Splashdown. Um, it, it was a while ago. Uh, but it's not like that now. If you, if you, um, use a splashdown uh, to defend yourself from taking damage, then you will probably die. Um, so use them strategically, like from a super jump, or use it from a safe distance kind of to just scare and space your opponents, rather than trying to get a pick with it on its own. Um, and this kind of just attributes to the 96 deco having a very unique playstyle, um, and it does well at pulling it off, uh, playing a good pressure range game. Now that I've they kind of explained how you should play the 96. Uh, you might be wondering where you should use the 96. And in contrast to that, where not to use the 96. And those are very good questions that I will answer for you. Um, the 96 gal, we'll start with where it's good. The 96 gal is good on maps that have no elevation or give the user a slight height advantage or disadvantage, um, depending on what side of the map you're on. Because if, like, obviously, if you're on the opponent's side of the map, um, you're probably going to have more slight disadvantages than advantages. Um, and the gal also excels 
on maps that have fewer walls um, or obstacles in the middle of the map, kind of like a pillow. Um, because of its slow firing rate and its range, it wants to be able to abuse every single shot uh, it gets off. Um, and wide open areas to, uh, to kind of combo on that. Uh, the wider an area is, the more command of, uh, the more presence and the more uh, sense of control the 96 user has over that area. Maps that combine these traits are the best, um, of course, because uh, good plus good equals very good, uh, just kind of a standard uh, logical equation. Um, so maps that kind of fit these requirements are maps like New Albacore Hotel and Skipper Pavilion. Um, as for where you should not use the 96, uh, kind of just take everything I said and think of the complete opposite. Um, so no, uh, no elevation or slight height differences. Um, turn that into tall maps uh, with structures or walls scattered throughout the stage. Um, few walls or obstacles in wide open areas. Um, make that lots of walls with a lot of objects in the middle and narrow corridors. Um, the RNG buff that the 96 got definitely helps with those narrow corridors. Um, so maps like Port Mackerel aren't as bad as they used to be, but it's still one of the weak areas because uh, because of the shot deviation. Um, that's still kind of iffy um, with its firing right really uh, being the bigger uh, biggest offender to that. Kind of examples of maps uh, like this are Moray Towers, of course, um, and Muscle Forge Fitness. Okay, and to kind of close this video, uh, I wanted to share a few tips and tricks uh, for the 96 that may help you uh, in uh, in-game performance. Um, the first is to definitely remember to abuse your range. Uh, it's definitely not the most accurate weapon in the world, but you can still combat meta picks like a Splattershot Pro or a Mini uh, pretty well uh, if you play the range. Uh, the second the second tip uh, is to only use your short range when you need to. Um, the more you rely on your short range, the more frustrated you'll get, and this is because the 96's fire rate is like really slow, as mentioned previously. Um, so staying further back to nullify it effectively uh, is your best option. Um, the third thing is something I'm going to call shot cancelling. Um, so basically what I'm calling shot cancelling is done by tapping the ZL button to turn into uh, squid or octo uh, octopus form, and then while still holding ZR, so that way once you finish, once you tap ZL, you go right back to shooting. Um, and this is useful because this briefly resets the RNG of the first two shots of the 96 gal. Um, since the 96 is a two-shot weapon, uh, it's the this tech is incredibly useful to kind of clutch out like a 90 degree turn or a 180 degree turn uh, if you need the first two shots in order to be able to uh, clutch out a kill. Uh, I usually use it when strafing or turning at a sharp angle, uh, like in the examples uh, described. Um, and the final thing isn't really a tech, uh, but more of a reminder to not jump when shooting. The four while the 4.9.0 patch did um, buff the RNG, it only buffed it on the ground, not in the air. So uh, that about wraps it up uh, for this guide for the 96 gals. I really hope you enjoyed and learned something new about the gal and get better at it or fighting against it uh, from watching this video. Um, if this video did help you in any way, be sure to leave a like um, and comment letting me know uh, you learned something and that I did a good job or or not. If you didn't learn something, if it didn't help you, uh, be sure to let me know how I can uh, communicate information better. Uh, I want to make these the best they can be, and the only way I can do that is if I have people giving me feedback. Um, subscribe to the channel uh, if you want to see more competitive content from me. Um, I definitely want to make the channel more Splatoon based as I plan to upload tournament VODs to YouTube and will happily make more content than that for uh, you guys if you enjoy it. Uh, be sure to follow me on Twitter and Twitch to stay updated with me and catch whenever I go live on Twitch. I stream on Twitch, um, and both of those links will be in the description. Uh, actually, all links will be in the description. Why not just those? Um, but yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you all next time.